Now, excuse me. Now, how much is this? Forty cents. I'll take it. All sales are final. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Could you tell me something? Why are you having a yard sale in the house? Normal people have them in the yard. <laughs> well, we were planning to have it in the yard, but last night the weatherman said it was going to rain, so we set it all up in here. <laughs> and then this morning it turned out to be a gorgeous day, but by then it was too late to take it all outside, so we just... <laughs> I'm sorry I asked. <laughs> I'll take this. Margo. Remember the lady who had her 100th birthday last summer? Did you get a lot of presents? <laughs> Hi, darling. Well, I haven't seen you carry Charlie around for a long time. I'm feeling a little insecure. Oh, well, now, don't you worry. We're not going to sell Charlie. Hey, Kevin, ready to come play at my house? Sure, Max. Do you still have a teddy bear? Oh, Kevin. What are you doing with Grandma's teddy bear? <laughs> That's your teddy bear, Mrs. Barker? Of course. A big boy like Kevin doesn't need a teddy bear. Heck no. That would be silly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I even have a special little bag that I carry Charlie in, you know, when we take trips. You take him a lot of places? Yeah. He just loved Disneyland, especially Country Bear Jamboree. <laughs> Come right in, lots of bargains. Boy, your grandma's really weird. Yeah, isn't she great? <laughs> Hi, Grandpa. Hi, darling. How's the sale going? $43.50 so far. Oh, good, 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 good. That's one. Who put this in the sale? What's wrong? You can't sell this. Why? What is it? Swing and sway with Sammy Shea. What's that? Well, that's a band I used to dance to when I went to school in Boston. <laughs> and right after the dance, they went out and dumped all the tea into the harbor. <laughs> <laughs> Highly amusing. <laughs> a young lady? Yes, ma'am. Coming right up. You know, this record is very precious to me. Yeah. You cannot put a price tag on a memory. No. Wow, Sammy K. <laughs> I'll give you 25 bucks. Sold. <laughs> I always knew you were a sentimental fool. <laughs> you got any more like these? Oh, I certainly have. They're right over there. Oh, yeah. right. Oh, I do so admire a woman who knows her vacuum cleaners. And you know, this is a heavy duty model. And a very special one really has never been used. We have all the appliances. Oh, oh, oh. What happened? Look what you've done! Oh! Oh, oh. oh allow me, madam. Oh. I'd be very happy. Thank to... you. Uh, Watch it, Buster. Oh. Oh. Really, I, I am very, very sorry. I have never been so humiliated in my life. You know, I bet she has. <laughs> House. I remembered it was time for lunch. Grandma? Yeah, darling. Thanks for saying Charlie belonged to you. <laughs> That's okay. You're the best. Thanks, honey. I put Charlie in a nice, safe place. Margot? Mm -hmm. What happened to the bag that uh, was under the table here? Oh, which bag? I sold one. Uh, I sold another one. Why do you ask? Well, I put Charlie in a straw bag, and now it's gone. Well, I, I'm, I'm sorry, honey. I'm really sorry. Well, it was just a mistake, sweetheart. Grandma didn't mean to. I guess it was a mistake. A tragic, tragic mistake. <laughs> Boys, this means I'll never sleep again. I put those posters up all over the neighborhood. Good. Anybody bring in Charlie yet? They will when they see this $50 reward. Oh, and uh, if it'll help any, I... 
I brought Kevin an old stuffed animal I had when I was a kid. <laughs> Leonard, what, what was that? I don't remember. It's been so long. But I named him Fido. Well, offering this to Kevin is very thoughtful of you, Leonard. Well, losing your teddy's the worst thing that can happen to a kid. Yeah. I know how I'd feel. <sighs> no warm, fuzzy fur to cuddle up to. No red felt tongue to lick away your tears. <laughs> All alone in the dark. <laughs> Leonard, Leonard, maybe you're not ready to give him up. Give it a few more years. Good boy. Good boy. May I help you? I'm here to help you, dear. Oh. I saw your poster, and I have your bear. Oh, you've got Charlie. Oh, uh... Oh, well, I don't know. Charlie wasn't wearing a hat, so I don't, uh... Oh, well, I'm a sweet old lady. I took the little guy shopping. Oh. Do you like it? Yeah, well, I... I... <laughs> well, the... Uh, this isn't even a bear. This is a rabbit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a bear. <laughs> Why, you, you monster! Pete, move out, out, come out here. Well, what do you expect? Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hello, everybody. son. Hello. Hi, Mom. I just stopped by to see if you had any luck. No, not yet. Oh. Excuse me. I believe that you're looking for this. You found Charlie. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Um... Loomis. Hilda Loomis. Well, Mrs. Loomis, you are going to make my son a very happy little boy. Oh, yes, indeed. Not so fast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> of course. Let me get you the $50 reward. I don't want your $50. Oh. <laughs> I want $500. $500 for a, 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 a teddy bear? Take it or leave it. That's extortion. No, it's revenge. You are only doing this because I vacuumed your skirt off. Don't be silly. Why, just the other day, I was saying, not enough people are tearing off my clothes. <laughs> Who did you say it to, Mr. Loomis? <laughs> All right. I, I, I'll give you $75. That's, that's my final offer. Obviously, your grandson's feelings mean nothing to you. <laughs> Too bad. You are the most unfeeling, unfair, unkind person I have ever met. If you don't like it, sue me. Well, don't think I won't. I'll see you in court. Ha! Huh? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sue that woman. Oh, now, now, Lucille, be reasonable. Lawyers cost a fortune. No, nope, no, you don't need a lawyer. Not if you take her to small claims court. You represent yourself. My mother went to a small claims court to collect back rent from a deadbeat tenant. Did she win? You bet. I had to cough up 300 bucks. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm going to have my day in court. I am going to sue her. On what grounds? The grounds that she's wrong and I'm right. <laughs> May I see the document in question, gentlemen? Thank you. Very exciting, isn't it? I'm not sitting next to you. Well, I'm not sitting next to you first. 
When the music stops, everybody sits. <laughs> the court rules that the defendant will have to pay the bill in question. But I don't have the money. Then you have the right to repossess the merchandise. Thank you. <laughs> Just as well, it made my head itch. Next case, Pasadena Small Claims Court, case number 711, Barker versus Loomis. That's me. Take your places, please. <laughs> Raise your right hand. You Sell me, swear to tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but truth. I do. I do. Uh, who is Mrs. Barker? I am, Your Honor. And I'm Mrs. Loomis. Yes, better known as the guilty party. <laughs> I am not guilty. And Mrs. Barker, we haven't decided who's guilty. That's why we're here. Now, you claim that Mrs. Loomis stole your grandson's teddy bear? Here it is, Your Honor. Now then, this is the bear in question? Yes, that's the one she stole. I didn't steal it. You did too. I did not. Did too. Didn't. <laughs> did. Didn't. I'm the one in charge of dids and didn'ts. <laughs> did. Mrs. Barker, would you please state your case? would appear to be about a bear. But in reality, it's about a human being. A little six-year-old boy who, because he no longer has his teddy bear, is spending his nights without sleep, tossing and turning, turning and tossing. <laughs> this bear was his security. And whose fault is it that his security has been shattered? Oh! <laughs> I'll tell you whose fault it is. An unfeeling, uncaring, selfish fiend of a woman. And is she in this courtroom at the moment? Yes! There is your fiend. I object. Objection overruled. <laughs> I'll do the overruling around here. <laughs> Mrs. Barker, spare us the legal histrionics and get back to your place. Mrs. Loomis, just how did you get possession of this bear? At a yard sale. Do you want me to tell you what really happened, Your Honor? Now, that would be refreshing. <laughs> First, she thinks she's the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Then she sells me a teddy bear and wants to buy it back. Next, she vacuums my skirt off. If you ask me, the lady doesn't have both oars in the water. Mrs. Barker, do you? I have as many oars in the water as she has, and I can prove it. I, uh, Your Honor, would like to call a surprise witness. Uh, would. Curtis McGibbon, come to the stand, please. <laughs> Lucille, I just came here to give moral support. I didn't expect to, to take the stand. That's I, a I, surprise. Over, over there. Uh, oh. Raise your right hand. Right, right. 
You sell me swear to tell the truth, hold the truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Be, be seated. Mrs. Barker, you may proceed. Sometime tonight, Mrs. Barker. <laughs> Mr. McGiven, how long have you known me? Uh, over 36 years. Mm -hmm. And in all that time, have you ever, ever seen me do anything that might indicate that I do not have both oars in the water? Do I have to answer that? <laughs> May I remind you that you are under oath? No! I remind him he's under oath. May I remind you you're under oath? <laughs> well, uh, well it, it's a little hard to know where to begin. Um, uh, I, I, I remember the time that you got your hand stuck in a saxophone and... That could have uh, happened to anyone. Uh, yeah, that's and the time you glued us all together on that TV show. Oh. Thank you, Mr. McGiven. That'll be all. Oh, I almost forgot the time you flooded. That will be all, Mr. McGiven. That will be all. Don't you ever, ever touch my gavel. I, uh, Your Honor, move his testimony be stricken from the record. He is a hostile witness. And I'm becoming a hostile judge. <laughs> Mrs. Barker, if you sold Mrs. Loomis something and she paid for it, it is the opinion of this court that the bear legally belongs to her. But Charlie belongs to my grandson. Mrs. Barker, put that bear back. No. Bailiff. Curtis, make a run for it. Ooh. She. Ooh. 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 Give, me the bear. Give me the bear. Mrs. Barker, you're very close to being held in contempt of court. How close? <laughs> there are a hop, skip, and a jump away from jail. I'm gonna count three. One, two. I'm sorry, Charlie, I tried. And get back to your place. Ha <laughs> ha! All right now. Truth, justice, and the American way! Your Honor, this is my daughter. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Mom, I have to talk to you. Oh, uh, uh the, the, the plaintiff requests a brief recess. Why not? Thank you. you won't believe it. Ted was going over his law books, and look what he found. <laughs> Your Honor. Your Honor. Uh, I call the court's attention to California Civil Code 116.3, rescission of contract due to mistake. Just what are you getting at, Mrs. Barker? Well, that means when a person enters into a contract based on a mistaken idea of the value of the item, the contract was made in error. Now, I understand, but I still don't see how that's relevant. Well, uh, Mrs. Loomis, uh, bought a straw bag at our yard sale. And this teddy bear happened to be in it. We, we didn't ever intend to sell Charlie. Well, if Charlie was inside the bag, the rescission of contract due to mistake might apply. Oh, you know about that little law. <laughs> I know about all the little laws. That's what I do for a living. Oh, and you do it very well, too. <laughs> Mrs. Loomis, did you know there was a teddy bear in that bag when you bought it? 
Well, no, but... So, according to the law, it was not part of the sale. Well, if you're going to drag the law into this... <laughs> the bear is mine. The bear is mine. I'll decide when the bear is yours. No. The bear is yours. Oh, baby. Case dismissed. No, no. And so the prince and the princess went back to the castle and lived happily ever after. The end. Did you like that story? Yeah, Dad, that was great. <laughs> okay, son. I think it's time for you to go up to bed now. I want to stay up until Granny gets home so I can see Charlie. Oh, now, Kevin, we're not absolutely sure that Grandma's going to get Charlie back, you know. And just in case she doesn't, I think you and I ought to have a little talk. Man to man? Man to man. <laughs> now, I know how upset you've been because Charlie's gone. I know when I was your age, I had a little teddy bear named Binky. And I slept with Binky every night. Just like Charlie and me. That's right, just like Charlie and you. Only one day, my mom put Binky in the washing machine. All that were left were two little button eyes and a lot of stuff in the lint screen. <laughs> anyway, I cried and I cried. But you know what? Before too long, I got along just fine without Binky. I was happy again. Boy, Dad, you're tough. <laughs> no, not tough, Kevin. You see, that's the wonderful thing about growing up is you learn to depend on yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think so, Dad. <laughs> That's my boy. Give me a hug. Yeah. Oh, Kevin! Kevin! Here he is! Kevin! 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 Kevin. Look at that. Oh, Charlie sure. is home. Yeah, we won. You won? Yeah. Yeah. You should have seen your grandma. She was magnificent. <laughs> it was worth it. Thanks, Grandma. You're welcome. But since I saw you last, I'm through some changes. <laughs> You've gone through some changes? Yeah. I've decided I'm too big to sleep with a teddy bear. <laughs> what? You look like you need Charlie more than I do. Here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, darling. Thank you, and come here and give your grandma a big hug. Oh, God bless you. I love you, sir.